Part four for work and power. What happens if for force is changing? So in all these examples we looked at, using the same amount of force, being sure the same amount of force to, to push an object, what happens if it's changing? One way we can figure it out is to determine the solution graphically. So for example, if I have a changing force, given the falling graph of an object moving along a level surface for plus 20.0 meters, determine the work done in moving the object. So let's say I, I graphed the amount of force that's being applied in a certain scenario here. It looks something like that. So force versus displacement. How far it's moving in the force. So you can see here I'm changing, going from 0 to 5 newtons, applying 5 newtons for a certain time period, then increasing the force. Now we're going to see something interesting here. It's very similar to something we we've taken in Unit 1 when looking at this sort of thing. We know that work is equal to force multiplied by displacement and it just so happens on our graph here that force is the y-axis, d is the x-axis. It's very similar to taking the area underneath here. We did that before. So if I look at this example here, because force multiplied by d, length multiplied by width, area. And of course it's very simple here. We could have, we could divide that into a triangle. And then if I look at what happens near the end here, I have that. A nice easy way to divide this. I could divide this here and have like a rectangle and another rectangle and triangle. But hey, why not just do it like that? And look at that full rectangle. And then that triangle. So divide it up, then figure out the area. So I could say, therefore, work is equal to the area of this triangle plus the area of this rectangle plus the area of that triangle there. <coughs> and uh, looking at that, of course, area of a triangle is a half base times the height. Area of a rectangle, length times width, half the base times the height. So when looking at these values here, I have a half of my base, which is 8. Height is 5, so a half of 8.0 meters times 5.0 newtons. Uh, plus the next section here, so from 8 to 20, of course 20 subtract 8, this section here is 12.0 um, meters, and this length here is 5.0 newtons, so 12 times 5, that's how I got that. And then lastly, a half of the base times the height. This position here is 16, that's 20, so this is a difference of 4.0 meters, what I have there. And going from 5 to 8, that's a difference of 3. So 3.0 newtons. <coughs> Excuse me. So multi the first section, 20.0 newton meters, plus the second section, 60.0 newton meters, plus the last section, 6.0 newton meters. And we get 86.0 joules. So determining work graphically when the force is changing.